Welcome back to the Capo Experience Podcast. Thank you so much for spending some time with us and letting us light up the motivation to keep pushing your capoeira trainings and for tuning in. Train hard, stay motivated, and bring your shit to the hoda. Bring it on. Let's roll. What's up, Capoeira Nation? Welcome back to the Capoeira Experience Podcast. Thank you so much for hanging in there. For being positive, keep training, try soon, everything you can to, to come back to Capoeira. And thank you so much for my friends coming back to to the interview, group interview. First time we're going to try this and see how, how this works. And uh, uh, I came, I, I brought back my my three good friends, Professor Congo, Professor Sokechi, and Amazon. How are you guys doing? Fantastic. Nice, nice. Loving Great to be here, buddy. Nice, nice, nice. Super happy to have you guys here. Uh, and thank you for, for coming back. And uh, really quick, before we start, uh, anything we're going to say here is just our personal opinion. You know, it's just, uh, it's not absolutely true. As you know, in the Capoeira community, I don't think, I don't think anyone there has the absolute truth. truth. You know, it's like, we, we just, just personal opinions. Uh, so today, today, today's topic is going to be Benguela and Bangela. There's a, there's a lot of questions, I guess, uh, in the entire community about, about Benguela or Bangela. And uh, I just wanted to, to bring this, this topic because I get the same confusion too. I don't know if you guys, if you guys do. Yeah, this yeah. is a confusing topic, but it's really if you heard about the interview they had once with Mestre Itapuan, he like tells the not the facts but his truth about the difference between Bangela and Bengala. Bangela, Mestre Bimba used to use it when the game was being too rough to calm down the people. So the games would be more calm, that people would go back to not kick each other's butts, let me put it that way. Yeah. And Bengala is actually created by Mestre Camisa from Abada. So that's the game he created for his group. And people that he don't know the difference or did not, I didn't know it as well. I found out like a few months ago when I saw an interview with Mestre Itapuan, he was explaining that Camisa created that specific game for his group, Bengala. And Bangela used to be used to calm people down when they were playing too rough. But yeah. that's from that interview that I got. I didn't, didn't do more specific interview um, research, but that's the where I got to hear the difference because I was like, okay, Bangela, Bangela, different way of saying it. But that's yeah. what I got from that interview. Yeah, because I, I, I've seen videos of Mr. Camisa spe- explaining that. We're saying like, you know, I created, I created this specific type of game for for our group and it just got spread you know and, and which is which is awesome too well, well what do you guys think of amazona what do you think about about the or how what have you heard about bengala and bangela around there so my first exposure to either um was not within my group I was traveling, I was uh, in Brazil, I was at another Hoda and the game slowed down. And okay. I'm like, huh, what is this? I, I think my first real exposure was actually 2015 when I went down for Mesha Mombrancas Mundial. Okay. Um, and the only, the only thing I knew that before then was Bangela was a city in Angola. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, province, it was a province in Angola and it was the third biggest slave trading port uh, during the colonial era. It was like almost almost a million slaves come out of there. Yeah, yeah. And I, I'm like, all right. And kept, people kept saying, Bangela, Bangela, Bangela. This is Bangela at the Mundial. And I'm like, all right, there's a city, Bangela with an E. And then there's a game, Bangela with an A. And they told me it came from Mesher Bimba. That was my truth for a long time. Like there's only, there's Bangela and there's a city. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and, and the, the, the game in capoeira was i mean what as it was explained to me originally is that it was slow it was playful it was about 
malandragens about trickery is about jogos de dentro, jogos de fora, slow, not necessarily slower, but just smarter. Okay, like a little more engaged, right? Yeah, it was later when I when I started learning that there's two different dokis and then there's two different games from two different lineages. Yeah. I back and look at it like what Congo was saying. Yeah, yeah. So, Kachi, what do you think? So, uh, I really like that particular question because it was something I had written down to ask everybody. Uh, I was nine years into training Capoeira before I even heard of Bangela or Bengala. And I, I originally heard of Bengala. Uh, and it was a couple of years of just the word Bengala before I heard about Bangela. So, I'm curious, uh, Congo and Amazona and Kashishi, how many years you guys were into your own training before you even heard of Bengala or Bangela, and which one was it? I was, I, I was doing Bengala uh, before Capoeira Brazil. So I joined Capoeira Brazil about 10 years ago, I think. Let me see. Yeah, about like 10, 8, 9 years ago. Uh, and my instructor at the time, he was like, no man is, uh, is the, how we do in Capoeira Brazil is Bangela. He, Bangela, what the heck is that, man? I, uh, for me, it's the same. He was like, no, it's not the same. It's just di different structure. It's just li little, little changes. And I was like, my, started like looking for like Bangela, Bangela. And then I saw like different, like Amazon said, different uh, uh, ways to play reading about, different ways to, to play. And then I started studying about the Mr. Camisa's way to say Bangela. And then Mr. Bimba say Bangela. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm a little confused at the beginning, but to, to answer your question, it was probably about eight, 10 years almost doing Bengala. What do you guys think? Was your first experience with Capoeira with Hezhenau or Bengala? Uh, well, Hezhenau do Brazil is a little bit, it's a, it's a combination of, it's, it's kind of like, like, a, like, it's very similar to Kadara Capoeira. To the, is, is we play Samento Grange, uh, we play uh, Bengala and Hezhenau Brazil. And uh, it's, it's, it's a little combination of both. So they, they started with both from the onset. That's really a long time ago. Awesome. Congo? Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, I used to be also from another group before joining Capoeira Brazil. So my first six years was purely regional. I was a part of a group called uh, Batuki Capoeira Holanda. So my first six years was purely, purely regional. And then... When I joined Capoeira Brazil, I was still only being part of the original games. I think just before I went to Brazil the first time is 2007, I actually got in contact with Bangela. And I was like, okay, why is everybody playing so nice, so slow and not touching each other? <laughs> and I'm like, okay. And then I got into the Hoda. I got kicked out of the Hoda directly because, okay, you're not following the rules. So I went in to, to look, okay, how is this, Bang Bangela? Okay, start learning. And with time, I went to Brazil, came back, and in 2011, no, 2011, I actually just walked into the Abada Roda. And I was like, okay, let's play. And they were playing much different, and the Tokyo was different as well. And I got confused. But I just tried to do my stuff. The professor there, late um, Professor Eskilo from Abada, was very nice. He didn't complain that I played it all wrong. But to really, like I said, the difference between the two, I only heard a few months ago. Hmm. I saw that Abada was playing their completely different style. And I'm like, OK, they have their way of transforming. And I'm like, OK. Why do they play this that way? And why do they say Bengala, Bangela, Bengala? And literally, when I heard about the interview, I thought like, oh, now I understand why they have the different speeds, ways of movements than it, than the than the Bangela because Bangela, like I like Master Bimba said, used to use is to calm down. But sometimes you see even Bengala games in Abada go very hard. Yeah, yeah, so, I've seen that too. That's actually how I found out. It took me years before I actually found out the difference. Amazon, what do you think? 
I would say uh, how it took Congo years. I'm still in that phase of like a couple years back. So I, I was first exposed to the Thaki in within a year of when I started Capoeira. Mr. Logan, Mr. Lajivogado in our group, they have everyone learn the music. Like you have to know the Thakis. But my, my understanding, and this is where I wanna, I wanna hit on a distinction between knowing something and really having a grasp of a concept and a distinction like what Congo was just saying, how he, how he could see the tiny nuanced differences. I knew the talkie, I could play it. I didn't have a clue of what the game should look like, is intended to look like, or even like that, it, that people were playing it when they were actually playing it until I started traveling more. And I saw Abada, I, I trained with an Abada group when I was working in Portugal for a while. And it was every single day. And then I realized this, this is very different from what my yeah. group does. And that's when I started to, to notice that there's a distinction. And then when I saw so many people on the Mundial in 2015, but like playing multiple different styles at one time, it made more sense. Yeah, yeah. So, Kechi, so you say that, that you, what was the, the, the style that you kind of like start seeing on, or what, when you got exposed to? to so, um, my first three years was with a, a group that's Angola based. And so the rhythms were Angola, Sabinto Pequeno, Sabinto uh, Asian Arm. Um, but when I started training with Mystica Truth, it was also Sabinto Branch de Pimba. Completely Haitian art. And we did that for another six years before his brother, uh, who was then a professor, came to live in Australia as well. And he had been training with Abada in the time he used to train with his big brother. And then when Mestri came to Australia, Tata started training with Abada. And when he came to Australia, he was like all about that Bengala. And so he would come and, and teach us the Bengala system and style and he was so passionate about it and it was really, really fun and interesting. And that was, you know, that was 2006. So then there was two very clear different languages that we were getting from uh, Mestri Picatriz and from Tata. And then we also have a couple of other guys in our group that have come from Muzenza or have come from Abada and they're all very strict with Bengala. So I still, before uh, I started going to Capoeira Brazil events, had never really seen anyone play Bangela. I never heard the rhythm being played outside of uh, my Mystery Bimba CD. Yeah. Because yeah, I know that uh, uh, Mr. Paulin in, in Mr. Paulinho, they play the, the Bangela very different, the Bengela. The, the rhythm, the, the virada is way different. It's the, the song is the... the the spice and the rhythm is, is very different. Yeah, there's definitely a, a, a difference in cadence and in, in smoothness between the two rhythms. And that's something I found really, really interesting. And to Vishpangi Sabia's credit, he plays Bidimbao almost identical to it sounds like on the CD. Like, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. amazing how well he plays it. Yeah. And so you can definitely hear and feel a different cadence. And something about the musicality was something that I was thinking about because we've all started to touch on the concept of language and differentiation. So do we start by saying or understanding the difference between a Haitian Isle game and a Bengala game uh, and talk about those elements of language and how they differ? Or do we start straight away with the concept of Bengala, Bangela and how the two of those differ? Because I think especially for newer people to Capoeira, they might not even understand the difference between a Haitian Isle game and Bengala game. And I've had people come to my class from other places and see now Bengala and be like, oh, isn't that Angola? So sometimes understanding the nuance in a language is really important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree. I, I've seen uh, people too, like asking me, like, uh, uh, do you guys play some uh, Haitian Isle or Bengala? And like, what is that? It's a really long question. It's, a, it's going to be a really long answer. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, so you got to explain the whole situation the, of, of uh, structure of the game, the, the structure of the beating ball, how the beating ball plays and all that stuff. Yeah, I have, a, I have a nice analogy that I use 
to explain the difference or to to conceptualize the difference between Angola um, between Benguela and Hezernal because the two games are played with with a similar set of uh, language base but the concept behind the way you play I, I feel is quite different and like Congo was saying uh, it's a game that, that slows down as again it has a different focus so I, I equate it to snorkeling and scuba diving yeah Okay. If I imagine the harder is like uh, is like the ocean, then when I'm snorkeling, I spend a lot of time up top, and I take a breath and I go down, and then it only lasts for so long, and I come back up to the top. That's where the game of vision is just more upright. But when like you're scuba diving, then you're down under the boat water, and you're spending your time down there, and then occasionally you need to reorient yourself in the game. You come back up, you take a look around, and then you end up going back underneath. So, Mesha Kamiza says that Bengala is the Jogun it's the, the his school's way of playing on the floor. So it kind of is a, it's a concept where I, I say to people, to, it's, it's a way of bridging the gap between hardest and between players, between Kijanal and Angola. It's a, it's a point in the middle where people can meet. Uh, and especially coming from Australia, 20 something years ago when we were playing at Hodders, there wasn't a huge Kapoya community. So if there was a Hada down at Bondi Beach, for example, you'd have Angoleros and you'd have Asian Isle players and people coming uh, from different tourist destinations and joining the Hodders. So everybody had to work together if you wanted to have some energy. You couldn't be like, no, this is a goal. No, this is Asian Isle. Yeah. Everybody was trying to find a common ground in language. And that's um, an interesting thing when you talk about the concept of flowing with the game, because maybe my language is different to your language, and we might have a different understanding of uh, the nuances of a game. But we, there needs to be some give and take when you're playing with someone who speaks a slightly different language. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's already, uh, I've seen before, too, where different, different groups meet, and they usually play more Bangela or Bengela to, to kind of like meet in the middle and then they go from there they kind of or like slow down a little bit more or like go faster a little bit more yeah this is he's awesome and uh, how long have you been doing capoeira and toro amazon um, amazon amazon 12 years yeah 12 years yeah mm -hmm. and and when you say when you start traveling to to do capoeira i know you travel for work but for for capoeira you so I, I always do both. Um, I, I just, my life wound up being like that. So I was in, um, right after I started Capoeira in like 2008, that was the first time I was exposed to it. And I started training with Mr. Mago up in Colorado Springs before I graduated um, and got my first assignment. And then that summer I went to Brazil. So I, on my own, so I trained every day. Um, um, with whoever I could find in Salvador. Came nice. back, trained in San Antonio for um, the three years I was stationed there. And then I got sent at like my third year mark of Capoeira, I got sent to Portugal for work. I trained there, I got sent to DC, I trained there. I got sent back up to Colorado, I trained there. I got sent to San Diego, I trained there. So it's every time I get sent somewhere for work, uh, when work is done, I am in somebody's academia at night. Nice. Nice. And, and do you see uh, like difference of Bengala and Bangela around that? Now that you know, you, you have a little bit of, of the differences at least. I still, I st where I am in my game, um, I'm still looking. Nice. Like I, I focus to one, hear the differences because uh, I was kind of music deaf for a while. I'm like, it's, it's, it's a beating ball. Let me go play and whatever yeah. they're doing, I'm going to try to match them. Nice. So I always went off the other person, especially if they were higher chords because I always play higher chords. Um, and it wasn't until I started getting an appreciation and understanding of the music that I was able to play lower chords with with more effectiveness. So I would say that I still don't quite see it, but I hear the difference in the music. So okay. I hear the difference in the music. I try to look for differences 
in the game. And I, I still don't see a lot of them. And I know a lot of groups still consider Bangela and Bangela the same game. Yeah, I, I, I pay. I just, I just try to pay attention. Yeah, it's just little details. What about you, uh, Sokechi? In regards to seeing a difference? Do, yeah, yeah. Like whenever you travel and and, and different groups. Um, I don't see a huge difference in, in the kind of game when we think about your intention and your pace of the game. Um, the music is a feeling, right? It has a, a vibe to it. But uh, I do see a difference in the vocabulary of movement. Um, there's a very distinct kind of set of movements that happen or positions that happen in a Bengala game that you don't necessarily see in a contemporaneous school or you wouldn't necessarily see in a, in a Hezhenal game. So I, I think there's distinct dialect, um, but I, I don't see a difference in intention or in pace of the game. Oh, okay, well, Congo, you, you, I know that you travel a bunch of times in, in Europe, and uh, I guess Capoeira is a little newer in Europe. You, even you grew up like really quick, really fast because the, the proximity of the countries. But uh, what do you see? in your time traveling there, the difference and all the stuff? Well, I, when I see, I, it's difficult to explain, but when I see somebody from Abada play Bengala, you see a complete different game from when you see somebody else try to do Bengala or yeah. play Bangala. Why do I say that? Because when you see Bengala, you see if you see a jinga, it's a miracle. It's down and stay down. Even if they do small flips, they're still almost on the ground. Like they do um, carnerinho, macaquinho, all those things, they, they are like glued to the ground, but still in a, how can I say, a attack mode, because you see they are very close to each other. And Bangela, I see, people give each other breathing spaces. You play, you try to catch each other, but you give each other breathing space. While in Bengala, if I catch you, maybe get one more. Yeah, yeah. Like, for example, I'll take an old Abada guy who used to be one of my favorite guys to see play is um, Mestre Tucano Preto. I, and then you see him play. When he plays Bengala, because Tucano Preto, for you to understand, he used to be an Angolero, who got into Capo, into Regional and into Abada. Before he went into Abada, he was an Angolier. Huh. He studies every shape of play that he can and he will play it. When you see him play Bangela, you see a difference in his, his, his swag because he comes up, he jingles a bit and then goes down and goes back in. But when he plays Bangela, he's close small but still have his reach of kicks his transformation to hit you to avoid while looking for the next attack to catch you so that's the because of him i know the difference let me put it that way i didn't know the I, name difference but when i heard the mr itapon talk about it a few months ago i went back to see the videos and then i could have seen how we transform in bangela with the breathing room and to bang Gala with the on the floor, but still tactical and approachable game. Let me put it that way. If you guys can understand what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree with that completely. Tukana Peter is super insane with his Ben Gala. Um, and we're the, the same where I teach zero Jinga in Ben Gala classes when we teach Ben Gala. So there's a, a huge language start there. Um, but when I was doing some workshops with Mr. Pauline Sabia on Bangela, he's, he definitely jingles and comes back. And so I, I, I hear what you're saying about the difference in giving each other a little breathing space. If you watch a good Bangela game, there's zero breathing space. You're on top of each other and inside and over and under and around each other way more. Um, and it seems more seamless, right? But in a Bangela game, you, you, I see people 
coming and going more. So that's an interesting thing that I was I wanted to bring up about the rhythm. Okay, because the Bangela rhythm has more breaks in that little phrase, dong, ding, dong, ding, right? So there are moments where I see in the game you're in and then you have your jinga back and then come back and do something else. Um, so having those little breaks in the rhythm is kind of uh, reflected in the way that I see the game played because there's little breaks and then it comes back. Whereas I hear uh, a Bengala rhythm, and it's dong, ding, ding, chiki, dong, ding, ding, it doesn't stop. There is no uh, break in the cadence, so it's smoother and has a little more uh, flow or melody to the rhythm. So I find that those games, they maintain engagement more. And I, was, I found it interesting that it's kind of reflected in the two different rhythms as well. Yeah, now, now that you mentioned that, it's actually true. Like, like, I never seen that part, but you're actually right on, on that sense of like the, the rhythm of, of the Bangela. You see that pass and then coming back and then going back in and then coming back down and that pass and then come back in. And yeah. it, it's awesome. Yeah, I, li I like that part. I like the way Congo called it swag. Uh, yeah. <laughs> when Paulina Sabia is moving like that, there's definitely swag. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember Mr. Paulinho, he mentioned uh, in, in one of his, his discussions uh, where he says, uh, you know, like in the, in the Bangela game, you use the Jinga to, to is, is part of the game. It's not just to, to Jinga. You know, you, the Jinga has a, has a strategy. It's to kind of like to rethink in the, the game, where you're going and, and to kind of like set back and reset your game to come back in. Yeah. You guys have any any other information about the, the Bangela game or Bengala game? Well, um, I'm just going to quote Mr. Paulano at this moment. If he, if people don't know his history as well, he's a, one of, he used to be a student of Mr. Camisa and he was asked once if he, if he can teach Bengala and he said he can't because he never did Bengala. If you want to do Bengala, you have to go to the source and that's Abada. So sometimes it's difficult. I know people say, yeah, Kapo, you saw it. You see how it's the Mr. Palau says, if you want to know Bengala, you have to know it from Abada or somebody who came from Abada. Bangela is more broad. Bangela has a, a history starting from Mr. Mr. Bimba coming down. So Bangela, you get it in different groups. So that's my opinion, if as well. So like Mr. Paulo said, I can say I did train Bangela. I will never say I did Bangela because I never did Bangela. Yeah, I saw that too. <laughs> Can we start getting into uh, the conversation of, of uh, lineage and parentage, right? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, our parents or our teachers are going to influence our growth. They're going to influence our accents and the way we speak and the way we perceive the world from, from the beginning. Mestri Bimba created the Hezhenal system, but there's thousands of people who play Hezhenal that never came from his lineage. I think that Capoeira grows, and especially with the diaspora outside of Brazil, it's important for us to appreciate where Capoeira has come from and, and where it's going. And somebody said once, Capoeira has no owners, only caretakers. That's true. So the game of Bengala has been seen and uh, adapted and adopted by many other schools and many other groups. Uh, I, I've seen an interview where Mr. Kamiza said the same thing. He's like, unless you've got it for me, you, you don't know it. And he said that he has, uh, he's embarrassed for people who practice Kapoleta, Begela, and they see things on the internet and then they go and try it and then they go and do these kind of things. And he's like, it's not Bengala unless it comes from me. But in the old days, even before the academies in the 30s and 40s, a lot of capoeira was learned that way. 
you would be at a harder in 1900, say for example, people would see stuff and then they'd be like, oh, I want to try that. Oh, I want to learn that. There wasn't so much academy learning. So people were finding out information or seeking information out from individual people. So you would have many masters or many teachers, or you would just be somewhere on your own practicing and trying to learn and figure out a technique and then going to try and apply it at the next part. So it's important not to, to get stuck in, in an ownership idea of Bengala or Bangela because uh, we need to make sure Capoeira maintains, it's, uh, it stays accessible to everybody. True. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree because so sometimes, uh, and I feel today's days, uh, and hopefully no one takes it personal, but today's days, Capoeira is, is, is for to everybody and from everybody, you know, he's, he's no, and a specific, yes, it's a Brazilian martial art, but he's so much capoeira around the world today says that, you know, everybody does capoeira right now. And uh, any language, doesn't matter where you come from. I mean, they, there's episodes before where, where I talk to people where, from uh, uh, Europe, where they are like, you know, I've been in the same room with people from different country where, we don't speak the same language. And once we come to the Hoda, everybody's speaking the same language. I mean, that, that's, that's a beautiful part of Capoeira where it just brings people together. If, if I may, Kashishi, I have one other thought to add yeah. on to um, Professor Sokechi's comment. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And he said it's, and I totally agree, that it's important to remember where Capoeira's come from and, and keep that vision of where it's going. And I would also add um, that it's important to, to see, to really see where we are and keeping in mind, everyone has their different views. Everyone comes from a different place. Everyone comes from a different home. Everyone comes from a different mestre. And because they come from different mestres, there's gonna be different lineages. Correct. Um, and, it, and that being where we are right now is what makes Capoeira so amazing because it it remembers the past but it doesn't yeah. get stuck in the past it remembers the slavery it remembers the history it passes oral tradition on over hundreds of years and it will keep doing that because that's part of capoeira and then it nobody really owns it yeah i mean, I mean it was it was a great point mr bimba is is credited with the organization of it, but there were groups, there were groups in Rio, there were groups in Sao Paulo, there were other groups, Pernambuco, anywhere there was a slave port where Capoeira of some form or shape was developing. And then it just became this melting pot. And now that's the entire world is a melting pot. And that, yeah. I'll add the, the last, my last thought on this concept of the melting pot and Capoeira remembering where it's come from and where it's going watching especially right now during covid watching the world try to adapt and that's in my job like i i have to like i'm responsible for seeing countries responses and the u.s response and taking care of people capoeira in itself was an art was a community that probably had one of the most the quickest responses to adapting and overcoming and transforming what everyone's dealing with right now to come together. That's true. Okay. And that's, that's what we do. That's what it does. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't matter where you come from. It's, it's, it's really cool too that to these days, because if we see Capoeira, I don't know, let's say 50 years ago, it used to be that like uh, people against each other, you know, like my group, your group, you stay on that on don't cross my line, you know, and then he turns a very aggressive capoeira. Like Mr. Francesinha yesterday mentioned, uh, before it used to be so aggressive. In today's days, is is just like so cool to see. Doesn't matter where you come from, we we raise the flag of capoeira, you know, and and it's beautiful to, to see everybody coming together for capoeira. Doesn't matter what group or I do capoeira, we do capoeira, it's about capoeira, you know. Yeah, we. It's a we. It's a yeah, I, exactly, exactly. Everyone has like their tiny little nuclear families, but it's one big extended family. Yeah, and, and these these Zoom meetings are giving us a lot of access to 
reach out different groups, different people from different countries, and it's, it's just awesome what, what the positive side of this COVID. Is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for coming back, bringing your opinion, and I appreciate you, all you guys still doing capoeira, holding classes and all the stuff, and, and, and training classes too. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm happy for this opportunity as well. Happy to meet Sikochi for the first time because I've seen the interview. I liked it a lot, the interview you did with him. And I've seen Amazonas so much times, but every time it's good to see her again. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> nice, nice. All right, perfect. Okay, really quick before we close. Every single you, one single advice to the Capoeira community. Ladies first. Oh man, you put me on the spot. <laughs> All right, I'll come from the space I'm in today. Okay. Just, no matter what inner voice is going on, keep going, keep training, do what you love, love what you do in every moment. Perfect, perfect. All right, who's next? So catchy. Okay. Um, with quiet. the current <laughs> conversation in mind, my my advice is is a uh, is a is a more of a statement than a, than, a, than a something to give you. Uh, I, I want to say that, you know, we've been talking about Benguela and Bangela, uh, and it's a conversation that has been going on for 20 years. And, you know, for people who live outside of Brazil, it's certainly not going to come to a final answer and give everybody the truth. But what's important to consider is that there is no best group. There is no best style. There is no best game. There is only what's best for you as an individual. There are so many different philosophies, so many different teaching styles and methodologies, so many different ways to play the game. Nothing is better than anything. The beautiful thing about the way Capoeira has evolved is that there are so many different rich aspects to it that nobody can master anything singularly or everything together. But we have groups that are super great with uh, a martial arts side. And we have groups that are super amazing with the uh, bendy, flexibility, flippy stuff. And we have other groups that do amazing music. And through time, people take the little bits that are best for them and incorporate it into their group and their system, their evolution. So whatever works for you best is the best cup winner. Absolutely. I agree. Congo. Um, I can't say nothing more because Sokechi got part of what, of what I wanted to say. Like, right. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> but <laughs> like the conversation was being Bangela, Bangela, but look at Kapura broad. You have so much styles of playing and you sometimes, you, sometimes. like you said, you have, like Sokechi said, you have to look what's good for you. Like, I will not be, a, I will with my physical form, you won't find me in a Mio Gio game. But for me, I play Bangela, not so much, but I'm more of a contemporane guy. I feel good playing it. I can go regional. I feel good playing that as well. But it doesn't mean I'm not a capoeirista. It doesn't mean I'm not profiting from capoeira. That being said, like Sokej said, look what's good for you and hold on to it and grow with capoeira. Keep the positive side of capoeira. Drop all the negative things you hear around. Yeah, no, this is not how you play. No, take what's good for you and grow because capoeira is still a young martial arts. It's still developing. And the, the essence of capoeira for me is that everybody keeps their personality in their game. You can be, have the same fundamental from your group, but you will never find a photocopy of one of another. Everybody keeps playing with their hearts. If they're copying somebody else, you will see with time they will get stuck, but you play with your heart. So whatever you do, learn, train, but don't forget to keep using your heart while playing forward. I agree and I agree. And I, I'm gonna close with this one that, you know, love everyone in the Capoeira community, you know, help everybody to grow and help your partner, your friend, whoever is in class to, to cause, at the end of the day, if you play good, I'm going to play good. If you train, I'm going to train. You know, like we all grow together. We all grow in this. Like, man, 
it's hard to play capoeira by yourself, right? So you need a partner. So you, if you grow, I'm going to grow. So it's, let's grow all together and let's help each other to grow. All right, perfect. Perfect, awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. And uh, I will see you guys around. Hopefully see you guys very soon in person and give you guys hug. See you in two hours. <laughs> yes, see you guys. <laughs> thank, <laughs> right, you. guys. Thank, you, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. My goal with this podcast is to inspire you to push your trainings and to help you to understand how awesome Capoeira is for us. Help me to spread the positivity uh, by sharing this episode with, with one friend, two friends, or anyone so we can inspire more and more and more and more people. Thank you so much again. Don't forget to subscribe. I will see you in the next order. Keep the greatness. Ashe.